Hello everybody and welcome to another cello technique tutorial where I'm gonna cover Louis Fayard studies of the young cellist exercise number 15 which is study for the left hand shifting so from the first and the fourth position before doing this exercise I highly recommend that you watch my other tutorial which is gonna appear right here where I'm covering number 13 of that same book of Fayard where it's a little bit more basic about the shifting. So watch this and then come back to this one because this one's a little bit more advanced. Well, with this set, we are ready to go. So I'm gonna play the whole exercise through and then as usual, I'm gonna tell you a couple of things on what you need to pay attention. Shall we go? Right, I just played the whole exercise through so you can have an idea how it sounds like and how the final result will be. So let's go immediately to step one. Step one here is to analyze what is this exercise about. So we see it's written here, study for the left hand, which is for the first and the fourth position. So always keep that in mind. Before you even start touching your cello, you always watch what it is about. Right, as, as it is an exercise for the position changes, there are a couple of other things that we can immediately, you know, pay attention to, which means the sound, you know, bow distribution, which is a very important thing, because without a very good bow distribution or bow management, um, this is not going to sound great. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show you in just a bit what do I mean with that. But first, let's focus on the left hand. So. We have the beginning, right? The first measure. That one, that first shifting. Right? So it's a common mistake that people, you know, they shift with hesitation. I always say, don't hesitate, you know, just go for it. I know it's crazily said, you know, just to go for it, like take the risk. But it's really true. The less you think about it, the better it's gonna become. So. Let's say you have problems with the first shifting, this one. You have hesitation. You're doing either too slow or either you go too fast and you go and it's completely out of tune. Well, so let's focus on the thing where it really goes wrong instead of playing it through the whole time, which you're gonna lose off time because, okay, some of you, of course, they have the whole day for practicing, but also many of you, they have families or they have another job and you do cello as a hobby and your time is really like limited. Let's say you have one hour of practice per day, which is not so much, but still in one hour you can do a lot of things if you have the right strategy of practicing. So we need to focus, where's the difficulty? So let's say the difficulty is here, this one. Okay, so what do we do? 
we take the note before we do the shifting. So in that case, it will be the D with the pinky. So we want to do this. We do that separately. We practice that. Okay, we do that a couple of times, five times, ten times until you make it right. Because the more you play, the more your arm is going to memorize where it has to go. And your fingers also will memorize. But how to do that shifting? Because, you know, we can do this kind of shifting as well. We jump or either we slide. We slide too much. So, okay, here I'm going to explain a little bit more into detail. So on the moment we shift in that first measure, so so we here we are with a pinky. Check out my left hand fingers. So they get closer in order to push. So here's important that you push. Be careful when I say push. It's not pushing or pressing on the string. No, it's just you know the push of that effect. So you need to. It's like you one, you want to push something. That's the feeling you need to have when you do the slide. In order to make it light, quick and smooth. So don't push the way you would understand like... No, because this is wrong. No, the push is just, you know, in order to do that. All right, so we do that a couple of times. And we go back. So again, pay attention to my fingers, what is happening. I'm going to do it again from the first measure and pay attention really to my left hand fingers. I'm going to even zoom in a little bit so that you can see more clearly. Let's go. See? Now we go back. See here? So don't jump also here, don't do, not do this or don't do this, no. So on the moment you shift back here, so your fingers are all pretty close to the string. So I suggest you to do this really first in slow motion, which is going to be like this. So on the moment you shift with your first finger, then you replace the first finger with the pinky, like that. So don't go with the first finger and then you do the pink. So don't do this. No, because then it's going to be really not accurate. So let's do that. So you do it like that and bit by bit, you press the pink, but not press too hard. No, everything goes really smooth. So don't really press too much on the string. This is a common mistake that many people do. All right. So this is important also that you do that slowly. Of course, I play the whole exercise through in tempo, but of course the beginning, you do it slower. You can do it, you know, per three notes. So here we see we play per six notes, but you can do per three, like really slowly. Or even you can do one note per bow, so like this. Why is it important to practice slowly? It's because when you practice slowly, you can hear everything clearer and better and you analyze you have the time to analyze everything like okay when do i need to think because if you play through mm, you don't have the time to think and you don't have the time to see observe things so it's important that you practice first slowly and then when you have it in your hands on that tempo you go slightly faster slightly faster slightly faster until you come to the original tempo so that's why I suggest start maybe with three notes per bow, maybe even, you know, if it's that uh, fast for you, do one note per bow here. So this is important. Anyway, you have to be patient and you will come anyway to the actual tempo. So in general, also the other slidings, you know, the other shiftings, it's the same. So as we did 
with the first measure. Same here happens. So don't avoid this or avoid jumping. No, so you really slide. So again, I'm gonna repeat. I suggest you to do first slow motion, very slow. So check out my fingers. Okay, if that worked fine, you go a little bit faster. Okay, if you repeated that a couple of times and it worked fine, then you go even faster. Okay, getting better. All right, let's check it out now, the second measure, how it would be. Oh, perfect, it sounds great. So, always do slower, then you go faster, all right? Okay, so next thing uh, we have in the third measure, so the last bar of the first line, we see we have a small jump here, so it would be like this. That one, right? You might think, oh, it's, it's a little bit scary. No, it's not scary at all. It's very simple to do. You just need to know one thing. So on the moment you play that open string, so here, this one gets ready. So always left hand anticipation. One more time. And you're ready to press. See? So again, if this doesn't work for you well, then we're gonna focus on that main problem. The main problem would be this. This is the main problem. Either you do like this, and then on the last one. Okay, so we focus on that. We take three notes before. So we do that a couple of times. So maybe you can even t take two notes. So on the moment you play the A, you jump here. One more time. See? If that worked fine, you do that like this. Perfect. One more time. And always hammer with your fingers. So don't be lazy with your finger. Don't be quite soft on here. So really articulate good. This is another thing now that I'm talking about articulation. So this is very important in this exercise that you really like articulate fine. So one thing that you can do, we don't need the bow. We can put the bow right here. And we can just play, you know, the left hand. And it's important that you hear this sound. So see, so you hear a kind of a pizzicato. So this is what if uh, this is what you need to do. So you need to play this exercise. If you do not hear a pizzicato, then it means your articulation is not right. So let's say if you are hearing this. Nothing at all, then it's not right. So you really need to try to pitch with your thing. So. so it's like you're hitting the note and you go backwards with your finger. See? So here you hammer. Of course, not too much because you're gonna destroy your fingers bit by bit. Don't overdo that. So just a little bit, but it's important that you hear that sound. All right, so when you did that, then you can take the bow and with that same articulation, so with that pit and with that hammering, try to play. Because why? Um, why articulation here is important. Articulation is very important because it's gonna help you for a cleaner intonation. Because when you don't have articulation, it happens this. Check it out. So everything is not accurate at all. Articulation helps a lot, you know, to ac make accuracy in your intonation. Of course, it doesn't solve 100% of your problem, but it's gonna boost at least, you know, 60, 70% 
of the intonation. The intonation probably is not going to be 100% yet, but it's going to be much better than without articulation, right? So as I spoke before, I spoke before about bow distribution, bow management. What do I mean with bow management? Well, bow man management, it's easy. The name says itself, you need to manage your bow. You need to distribute well your bow. So let's say we are playing, so the original bowings here, so six notes in one bow. So I'm gonna show you an example what is wrong and I'm gonna show you an example what would be, of course, not correct, but what is gonna help you a lot. So there we go. And you're gonna see really a huge difference. Okay, now the next one. What was the difference here? The second, of course, the second version obviously was the right one. The first one, what happened? So I used too much bow in the first three notes, as you saw, and then we almost used the whole bow and we don't have enough bow, we don't have enough space to do the rest, to the other three notes. So then we automatically use our reserve and our reserve, unfortunately, here in this, in this case is not so good because we're trying to press like because we want to make it sound but we're just doing the wrong way so we start either to press with our hand and that then happens this scratchy sound unfortunately or we start you know to to swim with the bow we try to invent things you know even unconsciously this happens you know so this is important that we manage well so i would say the first three notes we go until the middle of the bow so you need to calculate this very well and then the other three notes, we have space, so we can produce also a nice sound because a good bow distribution will help you to produce a very nice sound. So this is really important. This is actually one of the most important uh, things in cello technique and in cello playing in general, a good bow management or bow distribution, as you want to call it. Now, another thing, now that we're with a bow here, now that we are focusing on the bow, now it's important so we spoke already about bow distribution. Now let's talk a bit, you know, about a good control of string crossing because here we have uh, a couple of string crossing. What are string crossings? So we are playing, for instance, uh, so the second bar, for instance, is a good exercise, um, a good exercise, a good example. So we play on the A string, right? But now we go changing to the D. So it's important that we do, maybe with open strings, we can play, so one, two, three, four. So it's important that you produce the same sound on the other string as you did on the first string. So let's do that one more time. One, two, three, four. So that doesn't happen things like this. really smooth so this is important open your ears very well over here so let's do that bar so see how how smooth it went so see how it sounded like equal so this is important that it should sound to equal pay attention to this afterwards in the exercise you're gonna see other string crossing so we're playing from the D string and then we go to the G so it's the same thing Listen very carefully, like if it sounds totally different, no, do it again, do it with open strings. I know it's boring to do open string, but this is fundamental, this is very important. Scales in this, in this sense is also very good to play because we're playing... We play this string, now we string cross. Same. this 
have a couple of other exercises of the Fayar which you can check on my playlist, which I talk about string crossing as well. I'm not going too much into detail, but I'm just telling you quickly that you need to really pay attention to the string crossing so that it sounds equal. This is the most important. Make sure that it sounds equal and beautiful without any funny sounds. Right, now that we talked a little bit about string crossing, so we're talking about strings. So let's talk about the lower strings. So the lower strings here we have at the fourth line of that exercise. So let me play the beginning of the fourth line and then you're gonna see. So... Um... <laughs> Where did we arrive? I, you could see, so we had string crossing, so from A to D to G to the C. So really a lot of string crossing in one bar happening, in one measure. So here at the C, so it's a very deep chord, uh, it's a very deep string, so we need to play deeply also. So don't even think, you know, to, to press anything. No, so first of all, put the bow on the string and use your arm here. So really try to get a fat sound. So what I suggest in order to open your string, and by the way, this exercise, what I'm gonna give to you, it really helps as well. If you do the right way, your cello is gonna sound better. It doesn't matter if you have a Chinese instrument or another, a factory made instrument it doesn't matter any cello will start to sound better because this all depends on the player of course we don't have all great cellos uh, not all of us uh, or either financially we cannot allow or we just don't need a better cello because okay we just don't need because we're just doing the cello for fun for a hobby but still you can make your cello sound great so it's important that you use the right gestures also so don't start to don't press too much so before even doing uh, this part of this exercise, just do open string. So breathe in and then breathe out. One more time. Breathe out together when you put the string. And very gentle. It's like um, it's like when you have if you have a dog or a cat or kids in general. You know, it's like. You want to pet them, you know, very gently, very kindly. See, so no, don't hurt them. So again, of course, you don't need to do each time, you know, this, this briefing out. No, of course not, because if you breathe too much, then you start to get dizzy. No, it's just, you know, for exercising. Then afterward, it goes automatically. Everything happens in discrete and everything happens uh, naturally. So. When you get this, then you don't need to breathe. The most important is that you do that movement. Of course, you see it's quite soft, it's quite relaxed, but it's not too relaxed because too relaxed, if it's gonna be muddy or like jelly, it's gonna be like this. No, there need to be a certain control in the fingers, in the hand, of course. But the most important thing is that you do it gently and make the string roll make the string circle you can see that the string see how it's make sure that you see that so i suggest you do a couple of times a deep beautiful sound if you're happy with your sound then let's try the exercise Here the same as the G string is also a low string, so the same approach as on the C string. Here in the D, here already it's less, and here, here we don't need this thing because if we play the same wave and we use the same things as we did in the C string, then here it's gonna sound it's gonna be too much, too much. So that's not uh, uh, necessary, it's only for the two lower strings in order to produce a nice, deep and open sound. All right, we spoke quite some about the right hand. Now let's go back to the left hand. Now in the left hand, so of course the study, 
is mostly for the shiftings but we see there are some extensions happening what means extensions so for instance let's take measure um, line number three here we have an extension this is an extension usually when we play A and B we use the third finger so it's not such a big distance right it comes naturally but here in this case in the score it's written second finger so the middle finger so we need to extend so this is another thing that happens a lot you know with people especially beginners and um, kids that are starting to play the cello they're not you know capable to do the extensions so what I suggest again focus on that part so let's say if you play like this it's something is wrong with intonation right so we focus again so where happened the problem let's see uh, well it was right there so let's practice this if you're getting lost with the intonation so let's say you're keeping up playing this well what you can do is take an or another string as a reference for an intonation in this case to hear it better we have the G so let's see it's out of tune well what can we do about it let's try to adjust this is better okay we see where the finger is okay let's try again So say do that a couple of times so when you do that five times ten times and everything uh, was precise then you can keep going so let's see the next one So see, this is something important that you need to do. So really open your ears here. And when you practice intonation, do it softly with a soft dynamic. So don't play it, you know, because you're not going to hear anything. Do it quiet. Because you can hear much clearer. So see this is important now what we need to pay attention so why when we have this extension so what happens a lot also that people are doing so they so they keep the first finger so see i mean this is not ideal because the if you keep all the fingers on the strings your your hand you know is gonna hurt your finger is gonna be tiring so now we can release our first finger in this case it's gonna be like this did you see how my first finger moved away let me show you this again so slowly so see one more time my finger is there the first thing right now we beat the second finger and now the fingers just here relaxed see now we continue so what happens so this is something that you need to do very slowly in order to analyze everything well release but then after this note we have an extension so we prepare in advance one more time relaxed we prepare we prepare to do the shift now here in this shift so we have an a and a g um, g uh, how do you call this uh, g sharp it's a very small distance so you don't need to do no it's so it's really like a small distance so don't jump too much jump a little bit not jump slide a little bit for sure for some of you you're gonna practice this as well separately right 
And the same thing with that extension we have. So we just did the first bar of line three. The same happens two bars after. So the last bar of the third line, which is on the A string, exactly the same. Here. So same thing happens. So same principle as the previous one. We extend, relax the finger. Now we prepare. So one more time, do that slowly and observe everything, but absolutely everything. In the beginning, it's gonna feel a little bit weird because you're probably not used to it, you know, to approach that way. But when you try bit by bit, you know, every day a little bit, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, after a couple of days, you're gonna be able to play it in a faster tempo. Trust me, I promise you that that do it first slowly. It's a little bit annoying, but afterwards you're gonna feel like comfortable on the couch. You know, playing this exercise through and not even watching here on the fingerboard, it goes fine. It's just, you know, that daily discipline, you know, just do it a little bit. You don't need to do that exercise, you know, uh, the whole exercise every day, no. Just take the parts that you have difficulties, focus on them, do it a couple of times, spend some time on it, invest some time. And then bit by bit, you're going to see some improvement. So anyway, these are the tips that uh, helped with me. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this uh, will help you out as well for the shifting. So always remember, don't think too much and don't get, you know, always your, your hand has to be firm. Your hands, they have to be firm, but they need to be flexible also, elastically. This is very important. Right. This was it for today's lesson. So. It's pr pretty obvious, but still, I recommend you, you watch the other video. So the study number 13, where it's also about shifting, but it's less advanced as this one here. It's a little bit more advanced because we have more notes and we have more things to think about. So watch first the number 13 because, before you come to this one, all right? Well, with this, uh, we will finish for today. And in a couple of days, I'll see you then with exercise or study number 16 by Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. Have a great week and see you soon. Bye-bye.